good. Oh, yeah, nothing wrong with your popularity. Uh, David, welcome on the show. Thank nice to have you here. Coming. First of all, I would like you to have a look at a little clip of film that we've made last night as the audience to your concert in Utrecht okay. came into the Oranje Hall. Hi David, I love you since I was 10 and I still love you. Bye. My mother is ill and she couldn't come to the concert. But uh, she says hello to you. Okay, bye. Well, since 74 I'm friends. <laughs> Saw you on the top of television. Yes. Hi, I'm uh, I David, I'm Marcel Wiegers. I'd like to present you this uh, CD. It's from our band. It's a two-man, two-member band. There it is. I'd like to have you this one. Well, can your future concerts be interpreted in America and also in Europe? We would love to do it. Here's the business card. I'll give you with both of our names on it. And uh, there are 28 million hearing impaired people in the U.S and even a greater number worldwide that need exposure to your music. Music should not be denied to them because as the deaf person, do you like music? I love music. I've never had access to, the, to music since I'm deaf. So through sign language interpreters, I get finally to know what the, the shape, the form, and the, the contents of the music are. So, and it's the great visuals, I tell you. And we want to thank you. We love you. Beautiful. I believe I saw that. Um, you, saw, you saw her last night. I believe night? I saw the girl last night. I think she was. Uh, yeah, my stage left. I think she she had quite a, a party there. Could you believe deaf people buying your CDs? It, it's extraordinary. Um, I have a friend who's uh, hearing impaired and. Uh, and his particular way is to li just feel the vibrations coming from the music. And, and he, he's got fairly sophistic, sophisticated in, in he can recognize instruments with the different yeah. degrees of resonance, you know. They actually want to go and, and do interpretations to all your concerts in America if you go there. <laughs> I think that's incredible. Have you ever understood all those screaming girls that were just screaming, as, as they said, because he's so cute? I've never attempted to. So you've never succeeded? I've never attempted to understand them. No, it's beyond my, uh, it's beyond my comprehension. I'm not... Uh, I was a pretty obsessive fan when I was a kid. I mean, I, I used to like uh, the, uh, the American musician, Little Richard. And uh, in terms of a collector, I would collect every record that he made. I'd try and find out as much about him as I could. And I do remember when uh, he first came to Britain, of waiting outside the stage door of the theatre that he was playing at, waiting for him so that I could get an autograph. I think past the autograph stage, though, I don't think I've uh, gotten any further than that. I would like to ask you something about your... your do you mind if I smoke? No, 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 please go ahead. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you not to smoke. No, I know. You know uh, better uh, than yeah. me telling you not. Do you smoke? I have done. For the rest of, enough for the rest of my life. Please go ahead. Um, I would like to talk to you about fear. Is it true that uh, for a long time the fear to lose your own mental health, your sanity, has been a major fear in your life? I think looking back when I was in my late teens and my early twenties, I think one of the predominant characteristics of, of the young person uh, uh, are two things. One, that his life should be squashed as quickly as possible or that he will live for eternity and he, he vacillates between those two points and uh, I think there's also a kind of a romanticism attached to the, uh, the, the zany or the crazed or the mentally unstable um, because of its assumed otherness I think the idea of being able to observe and be a participant in an alternative reality is, is uh, very exhilarating for some young people. I think when you're also an artist, it almost comes with a territory and I think that you assume that you must be a bit crazy just to be an artist. Um, I had a, some uh, uh, sense of traditional mental instability in my family so that I was overly concerned that it may in some way apply to me as well. And then, of course, uh, getting involved in drug usage in the uh, 70s um, really gave it sort of long order. 
Um, but I think for me personally, as an artist, uh, it's, it's not something that, that I would entertain anymore. I feel fairly stable. <laughs> They're like, you should congratulate him now. <laughs> Still, I don't get it. If, if you were overly concerned because of, of, of mental disorders appearing somewhere in the family, mm. th there's this one thing that I don't understand. Why on earth, if you're so concerned about it, do you go on stage and invent a lot of characters that you've played for months and months and months on stage and a lot of time, times off stage? Weren't you tempting the gods? Oh, I think that was pure shyness. You, in, in, at one, in one very serious interview, you said, whether I filled the characters with my life or filled my life with the characters, that's unclear to me. Yeah. So, it, so that's, to me, that shows that you really lost yourself somewhat in the, oh, those characters. Yes, I, I mean, that yes, is tempting absolutely. the gods if you're well, concerned about really. I mean, losing your sanity. One doesn't have the equipment at that age to know if you're tempting the gods or, or, or otherwise. I think that you just flow with what you feel is a very energetic life river of energy and excitement, you know, and uh, uh, I put myself in a situation where I really didn't know what the boundaries were and what the fine line was between my characters on stage and my, and my absolute uh, self. Um, and uh, and that's, that's something that really I never really came to terms with until the late 70s, and in the late 70s it, I started to redefine exactly who I was by readjusting my life and taking myself out of a, a, a kind of a pretty fast lane existence. Did you, in a way, like Lou Reed puts it, uh, do a little of growing up in public with your pants down? Um, rarely with my pants down. <laughs> and I'm not sure about growing up. I hope that I never fully grow up. No, I, I don't think... <laughs> no, I haven't grown up, believe me. <laughs> Do you resemble your father? Um, physically, yeah, uh, well, yeah, I think I'm pretty much... Oh, uh, I guess an uh, 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 amalgam between my mother and my father, and, and like both, I suppose, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't thought about it, really. What sort of a man was he? A, uh, the typical polite English gentleman? Yes, I think he probably was. He, uh, he was a very decent man. Um, I think if uh, I inherited anything from him at all, uh, it was uh, maybe a love of books. Um, he was an avid reader. And, uh, um, and that was one thing, I think, probably that did more for me than anything else that I've ever applied myself to in life, is that I became a voracious reader. And to this day, I mean, it still gives me uh, the most extraordinary pleasure. Uh, I can't, I couldn't possibly tell you how fantastic it is just to just become fully involved in the thinking and the ideas and the location of somebody else's mind. I mean, I guess that's why I want to write, you know. <laughs> Did your father ever tell you when you went into music you're doing the right thing? I believe in it. Yes, I mean, I, I, I hope that I would pass that on to my son. Is that it, he, he made it very clear that my choices were mine uh, as of a certain age. Uh, uh, and that whatever gave me, he was ne he never pressed me into uh, thinking of financial stability as being something to particularly strive for. That it, for me it was uh, a much more a case of what is it that you really feel will make each and every day something to look back on and say that was really good. Was he that you know? kind of man for himself as well? Yes, he was. Yeah. Was he a successful yeah. man? Um, yes, he was a successful man. Uh, financially, no, not at all. But as a person, he was. Uh, he worked for a, a, children, a charity in England called Dr. Bernardo's, Dr. Bernardo's Homes. Um, and uh, that's something that gave him uh, terrific satisfaction. Would you call him an outsider in his days? No. no? He really. belonged to a group? Um, belonged to a group? No. I don't think any of my family ever belonged to groups. We're not group people. We tend to be quite sort of uh, very self-sufficient people. Give us a book and a paintbrush and we don't really